This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Well, hello there and welcome back. In this exercise, we're going to continue looking at animation. But basically, what we're going to do is take that sky you see and put it into motion. The great thing about being a motion graphics artist is that we get to take these instants in time that a photographer will capture and actually put them into motion so that the user can somewhat experience what the photographer experienced. In this case, a storm rolling in from the hills in the background. So let's get to work. Now, there are two places where you can do this using the Adobe Master Collection. One is in Fireworks, where you can just select the sky and the lake turn them into separate layers. And the great thing about working with fireworks, of course, is that you can create transparency. That's what that is. That's transparency. So you can create these transparent PNGs that come in with separate layers and away you go. The problem is, is After Effects has a bit of a problem with transparent PNGs from fireworks. It tends to flatten them. So you're going to lose the layers. It just comes in as footage. So what you might want to do if you are a devoted fireworks user is file, save as, and then in the Save As area, come down to Photoshop PSD right there and just save it out as a Photoshop PSD image. Now, the other thing you can do, of course, is just open the image up inside Photoshop, make your selections, save it as layers, and save it out as a PSD image. Either way, what you need are these two layers, the lake and the sky. Now, we're going to pop over to After Effects. And to work along with me here, I'm going to need you to open up the position.aep file that's located in your Lesson 5 exercise folder. And when it opens, there's the image. And you can see that there's the lake, there's the sky, there's the lake, there's the sky. So they come in as separate layers. Now what I've done here is I've taken the uh, sky layer and just made it a lot bigger. And you'll see why in a minute. Now there are a couple of ways that we can make this move. The first way is very simple. Just select the layer, press the P key. And just move the sky, select the sky, and hold down the shift key. Then just start it on the edge there. And let's move the sky from left to right. So we just put in a keyframe right here for position. And let's go out to the one second mark or the two second mark. And select the sky. And with the shift key held down, just drag it straight across. You can see there's your motion path. And if we scrub across the timeline, you can see that the sky moves across the background. Now I'm going to deselect that and just let you see the effect. See, there's the sky moving a little quick, I know. Now, another way of doing this is to actually have the sky come towards the user. Remember, we're moving on the X and the Y axis. We're moving left to right or up and down. Wouldn't it be great if we could just have the sky come actually towards the viewer? That uses the Z axis. So I want you to select File, Revert. And when the file reverts, this time what I want you to do is to select the 3D. Okay, so enable 3D right here by clicking that, and then click the 3D switch in the sky layer. Now, if you click on the sky layer, select it, press the P key, you can see there's the position, X, Y, and Z. And Z really will just do this. If I uh, select it, you can see that it moves towards you. So I can take it on the Z axis and actually do a tween on the Z. So I'm going to put this back to zero. I'm going to add a keyframe at this point and get myself over to the uh, two second mark right here and have the clouds over two seconds move towards me. And you can see it's a pretty cool little animation. And if I come back to the start, I can just do that. And you can see that the clouds come rolling in. Okay, let's take a look at that, looking at the comp without anything selected. So you can see there are the clouds in motion. So there you go. There's ways of using position to add a reality. You can use the X and the Y axis, or if you want, enable the 3D and then click the 3D switch for the layer and move it on the Z axis. And you can actually have the objects or the selection move in closer to the viewer. In the next exercise, we're going to take a look at using blur.